The crowd swarms through the international exposition. Avenues and alleys are crawling with people who, with people whom, packed elevated trains thread their way through garishly futuristic buildings blazoned with neon and screaming colors. People shove each other to get a glimpse of the most prestigious exhibitors. This enthusiasm is impressive, but have I really traveled around the world to see this? The first time I visited an exposition was a long time ago. We had to travel 30 kilometers to the county seat. A big trip. A big dream. There were only simple rows of wooden booths, and yet already it was the apotheosis of technology and plastics. Not yet sophisticated computers, nor communication satellites, but already gadgets for dicing vegetables, nylon stockings that didn't run, or hardly, and machines which, it was said, could wash dishes. I who address you here, chosen at random in the crowd of 1950, demonstrated that a bakelite squeegee could, with a simple gesture, spread paint so it imitated the grain and the knot holes of wood. What a success! What a marvelous invention! since a ten-year-old child could manipulate it without being taught. The spectators watching me were no less surprised and full of admiration than those of today who look at machines that reproduce three-dimensional virtual images or the electric robot that will replace the seeing eye dog. The commentary will always be the same. It's amazing what they can do these days. Time marches on. In fact, two days later, in a museum, it seems to me that I haven't come to this country to marvel at the advances of technology, but rather to meet a stone personage sculpted at the edge of a large block of limestone. He has been climbing, scaling for centuries, and for centuries always with the same tactile sensuality that those who have seen him feel from their eyes to the palms of their hands. His rounded forms, the unclenched muscles of his legs, his arms, his back. His face is probably one of the most beautiful in the world, but, since his back is turned, we see only his wavy hair. He is completely absorbed by his effort. He is rising. Instead of advancing, we too ought to try to rise.